Welcome to Success Stories in Steuben County, created and implemented by the fourth grade class at Pleasant Lake Elementary, edited by Austin Van, and supported by the FIST grant and MSD of Steuben County Schools. Hello, and welcome to our series of podcasts called Success Stories in Steuben County. You may want to listen to the previous episode too. You to learn more about our guest, Mr. Powers. You are listening to episode three. My name is Phoenix Wilkinson. I'm here with Mr. Powers. Hello, Mr. Powers. Thank you for taking the time for this podcast. Good morning, great to be here. I know that you have worked hard in the museum to make displays. I also know there is a display in the museum about the junior truth. I read about the junior truth, but I didn't see her visiting Pleasant Lake in the book I read. Could you tell me about her visit? Sure. Uh, Sojourner Truth w- lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and she was invited to come to Steuben County by abolitionists. You know the term abolitionists? People wanted to get rid of slavery. Oh. And this was in 1861. She spoke at the courthouse in Angola. Not the courthouse that's there now, the, but the one before that. And okay. that was a controversial thing, of course, especially... Uh, someone who'd been a former slave herself, coming and talking to abolitionists. A lot of people were not, in those days, were not, while Indiana didn't have slavery, they were, there were people who weren't opposed to it, they just didn't have it here. And it was quite the controversial thing for her to come down here and speak. So she did at the courthouse. There were people in Pleasant Lake who were also abolitionists, who wanted her here. And she came to Pleasant Lake uh, in two different houses, and, neither one of which exists anymore, but just north of town. And she didn't give a formal speech here, but she came out and talked to the folks on, on the porches who would come around to, to visit with her and listen to what she had to say. But there were people in town also who thought she was just a troublemaker and they wanted to get her out of town. So she was actually arrested in Pleasant Lake, believe it or not. They didn't really want to arrest her, they just wanted her to get out of town. So she was only in jail one night. The reason they arrested her, the the law that they they said she violated, was the Indiana State Constitution, written in 1851. The Indiana State Constitution in 1851, believe it or not, said you could not come into the state if you were black. There were no slaves here, but you weren't to come into the state if you were black. Couldn't do it written into the Constitution of the state. Now, it was mainly ignored. Nobody paid much attention to it, but they used it as an excuse to get her out of town. She had come to Indiana before and came back again several times, but not to Pleasant Lake again. How did you get a hold of the Junior Truth's belongings or memorabilia? We don't have any of her actual belongings or memorabilia. We just have copies of things. You've seen the books and uh, some pictures and things like that, but we don't have anything actually belonged to her. If you go to Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is not all that far away, they have stuff there because that's where she actually lived. Is there any information you would like to share on the Junior Truth? Well, as I said, she actually came here, and uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a, it's at least an interesting fact, maybe a, a shameful fact, she was actually arrested in Pleasant Lake, Indiana, in our little village. Wow, that makes me really interested about the things that came up in the past now. Yes, so you learn something new today. Thank you for taking the time you took to create this podcast. Can't wait to see this is Junior Truth at display at the Pleasant Lake Museum. Come on down, we'll talk more about her.